every time you see that number go up and you tear yourself apart, you are setting yourself on a path with an uneasy foundation. You're going to fall through those cracks. So today is day 340 seven of the carnivore diet. I just had, I think it's one of the best non-scale victories I've ever had. This is my bikini and I, you know, I still have some damage from eating the standard American diet, 168 pounds. My highest weight ever was 240 pounds and on the carnivore diet, it started at 200, 202 pounds and <laughs> this is a medium. I feel like it fits. I'm, I remember always being so nervous about wearing a bathing suit. This is the first time in my life where I'm not ashamed of my body and I'm just like, yep, I'm wearing a bathing suit. <laughs> just like everyone else. This is incredible. You know, I used to, I lived my life for so long not loving myself and um, it feels really good to be able to just take a moment and go, yeah, you're wearing a bikini and you don't look horrible. <laughs> And you look like exactly how you're supposed to. Could I be working out? And could I be doing things to make my physique more tight and more muscular? And of course, but this is my reality right now. And <sighs> all the years of just surrendering to my low confidence and allowing food that was horrible for me to take over my life, my emotions, my mental space. This feels, feels really good. I think individuals who are on a weight loss journey, no matter how big or small you start off, we all have relinquished ourselves. We have given power to a number on a scale. And I remember from a very young age, really like freshman, sophomore year of high school, I remember hearing girls talking about their weight. I remember one girl, she was saying, I am under a hundred pounds and I was not a part of this conversation. I just kind of was listening in on it. I was eavesdropping and I remember all the girls going, oh wow, really? You're under a hundred pounds? And she was so proud. She was so proud that she was under a hundred pounds. And that kind of got me thinking about my weight. How much did I weigh? I want to lose weight. I want to look good. I want to be attractive. The number of the scale was everything. I didn't want to be healthy. I didn't want to be muscular. I didn't have a goal of like running a mile in a certain amount of time. It was all vanity. I wanted to be smaller. So I started having this negative mindset about my body when in reality my body was beautiful. I had such a nice, healthy body when I was a teenager. And then it wasn't until after I graduated high school and I started my first job, which was working at a bakery, when I started seeing the scale really start to go up. And I was intoxicated by all of the pastries, the smells. I can still smell them <laughs> to this day. This is so upsetting to me. But the truth is, is that I would sneak into a freezer that I knew that didn't have any cameras and I would eat food that was supposed to be thrown away. When food is out on the counter and a customer doesn't eat it within a certain amount of time, like if it's under a heat lamp or something, you're supposed to take it to the back, log what wasn't sold, and throw it away. I took it as an opportunity to fill my stomach. If I think back, I wasn't actually hungry. My stomach was a monster and it just wanted to consume everything. There was no means to an end. And as the years went on, I just kept slowly gaining weight. Every year, I would gain something like 10, 15 pounds. And I would eventually become 240 pounds at my highest weight. And a lot has happened since, you know, that point in high school to becoming 240 pounds. But I think that all I really cared about was the number. And the thing is, is that I didn't really understand what the number meant. I remember um, taking my measurements because I was like, oh, that's something that people do when they want to lose weight. They look at their inches. And that's something I actually still really like that I've learned. But I remember taking my measurements of my hips, you know, largest parts of my hip with my butt included. It was the largest part of my body. And it was 50 inches. And I remember going on Google and typing in, is a 50-inch hip size large? 
Is it big? Is it fat? I didn't really understand my body, especially when it came to um, how I looked anymore. I feel like I just kind of blocked it out. I don't like to say, unless I'm actually properly diagnosed by something, I don't like to say that I had something, but I had, I think I had some symptoms of body dysmorphia in the sense of that when I would look in the mirror, I thought I was smaller than I actually was. And it wasn't until I had a picture taken of me at a, at a horrible angle. I would stand next to somebody who was a regular healthy size. And that's when I would see it. I noticed it looking back in pictures that I was always posing. I had my hip out, my leg, one leg forward. I would go on my tippy toes, anything that I could do to lengthen my legs, to make my legs appear thinner. And this is not a conscious effort on my part. It's just something I did. It was something I was insecure about. When I sat down, I would raise my toes too because I wanted my legs to look smaller. That was my biggest insecurity. And when I was on my weight loss journey, I felt like I said that for so many years, I'm on my weight loss journey, there would be three outcomes that would happen in the morning. When I would wake up, every single day I did this. Every time I'd wake up, I'd go to the bathroom. I'd make sure I had no clothes on. So I took off my pajamas, my underwear, any jewelry that I was wearing, hair tie even. I had to be completely bare. And right before I would step on the scale, there would be this anticipation. What's going to be on that scale? There's three outcomes that's going to happen. One is that I lose weight. Oh my gosh, I lost weight. Yes, I'm so happy. I can do this. I'm, I'm strong. I'm confident. I'm going to lose this weight. And then there'd be the second outcome. I'd step on the scale and I didn't lose any weight at all. Or maybe it was a minute number, right? And then it would just be like this awkward moment of being like, oh, well, I didn't lose weight. Well, I didn't gain weight. Why? Why didn't I lose weight? Is there something wrong with me? Hmm. Maybe I need to think about what I'm eating. Maybe I'll just cut my calories a little bit more that day. And then the third outcome, and you know where this is going, you step on the scale and... You're heavier than you were before. The number went up. And I remember thinking the most horrible things about myself. Every time I stepped on the scale, my mind would create these horrible phrases of you're ugly, you're fat, you're undeserving of love. You will never lose this weight. You are a leech on, of society. All the people you think that love you, they're going to leave. Or they're just going to keep taking advantage of you until they suck you dry. It's very easy for me to have this negative mindset because that's where I lived for so many years. I suffered with depression. And when things got too hard, I had panic attacks. And when things got even harder, I would disassociate. That number on the scale was directly correlated to my self-confidence. If it went up, I was like a worm, like just a bug, just crush me. If I lost weight, it would give me motivation to keep going. But as most of us know, if you're watching my channel, you know that I lost my weight with keto and carnivore in the end. And I wasn't properly nourishing my body. My nourishment had been redacted. I went to the doctor and I, I pleaded with him. I said, please help me. I want to lose weight. I'm so fat. And he literally pulled out his cell phone. He showed me an app. It's a free app. This is, I'm not sponsored by them. People say that right on YouTube videos. I'm not sponsored by them. Uh, My Fitness Pal. He pulled it out and he said, listen, you're going to put in your numbers. You're going to put your weight, how much weight you want to lose, and your um, your goal weight. And that's going to tell you how many calories and you're going to log every single thing. And I took it like gospel. I really did. And I don't think I was the most consistent with it. But when I was in that like tunnel vision of I have to track everything, I did it. And I just kept, I kept yo-yo dieting. My, my weight would start to go down. I'd lose 20 pounds, 30 pounds. And I would feel like I had myself under control and that I deserved to eat something that was off plan. And usually that was like Chinese food or pizza or um, a large amount of pasta 
or cookies and cake and all that ice cream. Oh, ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was, I became so addicted to those foods again. I just kept eating them or saying, oh, I can just add it to my calories. Oh, I can just add another serving. It's okay. I just won't eat that the next day. And then it just, it was a mess guys. It was a mess. So I would just keep doing it. And then I would quit when I fail and I would just give up on myself. I didn't take care of myself. You know, just all those things that come with when you give the number and the scale so much power. And I'm not saying you don't use the scale. It's it's a tool. Okay. And what I've if I've learned anything on about the keto and carnivore diet is that I need to make sure that I'm giving my body enough fat so and low, low, zero carbs so I can run on ketones because that's where I feel my best. You might be watching this and maybe you don't feel your best on ketones, but I do. I sleep better. I have more energy and I, I think so much clearer. I mean, don't get me wrong. The number going down from 240 pounds when I first started keto and then, you know, this year when I started carnivore and now I'm down to 168. It feels so good to see that number on the scale. 170 pounds was my goal for like 10 plus years. I desperately wanted to see that number. And, but I think that there are people who put too much pressure on themselves because at the end of the day, to truly lose weight, there's lots of things that go into it. It's not just calories. It's not just the food, even though it plays a big part. You have to make sure that one, you're eating well. Two, that you are sleeping well, that your hormones are in check, that you're, and then the most important thing is that you're kind to yourself. Every time you see that number go up and you tear yourself apart, you are setting yourself on a path with an uneasy foundation. You're going to fall through those cracks and end up in a, what I like to say is like when I was at my lowest point, the heaviest I was, the, the deepest, darkest depression. I was at a bottom of a ditch. And I would look up and I would see all the beautiful blues. I would see the beautiful birds. They'd be singing. There was a big oak tree and the sky looked so blue. And I would try to climb out of it. And I would try to pull myself up. And I would just slide back down. And I lived at the bottom of that ditch for so many years. Because the thing is, is that I didn't have any self-confidence. I didn't love myself. And I think that is so important. Now, you'll see groups nowadays, people on social media that say that you should love yourself at any size. And in a sense, I agree with that. But my problem is that we're not working towards becoming healthy. Yes, love yourself in that moment. But I need you. And by you, I'm talking myself. <laughs> and if you resonate with it, you too. I need you to do everything you can to truly make sure that you're taking care of yourself. Are you brushing your teeth? Are you showering? Are you making sure that you're going to bed on time? Are you scrolling mindlessly on social media constantly? When you look in the mirror, are you happy that you're alive? Are you grateful for the things around you, for the roof over your head? These are things that... I've had to learn and it's not, I didn't learn those things because now I'm at my goalie. I learned those things because I think that when I eat carnivore, I don't have those temptations to binge, to overeat. And I don't get this like obsessive nature with food in the scale. And I think that's such a beautiful, wonderful thing. And that's why I think that we need to use we need to use our tools that we know. We need to use these tools and we need to build ourselves, build ourselves out of the ditch and create a future path. Not one that is crumbling and unstable, but one that is solid, that has a good foundation. Who are you surrounding yourselves with? Are you loving yourself? Are you praying? Do you have like a vision for where you want to be and the actions that are going to take you there? I think that weight loss for me is not just a number, but it's a state of being 
for a long time. And it's a hard, horrible state of being because you're just like, what's wrong with me? So if you take anything from this video today, I feel like I've been blabbering enough. But the point is, is that I just want you to love yourself. Find something you love. If, it, if, if you truly hate your body, think about how other people view you. Your jokes are always so funny. You always know what to say when someone's crying. Or you give the best back massages or whatever it is. There's some, Or maybe you create beautiful art. Whatever it is, you are beautiful just the way you are. And let's work together to make sure that your nourishment is unredacted and that we can finally, finally say goodbye and end the weight loss journey. And we can just start living. Because life is a journey and it doesn't need the weight loss attached to it. I love you guys so much and I can't wait to see you in the comments. Bye-bye.